Art is, to me, is an expression of the interior self that uh, it can be tactile. It, any of the five senses that it engages would be a, a way I would express it. For me, it's, it's motion and paint and the use of my hands and kind of a free-flowing outpour onto the canvas. It's natural inspiration. It's these moments that, uh, you know, it just hits you like, like rain hits your face. It seems very right. And uh, sometimes, often I'll just start painting and let it go where it wants to go. Every artist follows some creative process. And while that process may obviously vary from person to person, in fact, even from one piece of artwork to another, there's one thing that every creative process has in common. Before a masterpiece ever comes into being, first, it exists in somebody's mind. Before a paintbrush strokes a canvas, before a chisel touches the stone, before a piece of clay is placed on the potter's wheel, before the artist has a painting or a sculpture or a piece of pottery, before the artist has anything tangible, first and foremost, the artist has a dream, an intention, an inspiration. In the artist's mind, he sees what he's going to create even before he creates it. It's almost as though it existed before it existed. Where does this ability to dream and to create come from? If we really are the result of a random, unguided evolutionary process, then things like art and music and mathematics and even science itself would seem gratuitous to say the least. But if we are created in the image of God like the Bible says, and that really explains a lot. Not only the ability, but the insatiable desire to create. Why? Because God himself is a creator. In fact, the very first thing the Bible tells us about God is that he's creative. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, I don't know what you see when you look at yourself in the mirror. Maybe you see someone who's too young or too old. Maybe you see someone who's undereducated or inexperienced. Maybe you see someone who belongs to the wrong social class, race, or gender. You see all your failures and shortcomings, and you think to yourself, God could never use me. But what about God, your creator? What does he see when he looks at you? Let me explain it this way. Early in the 1500s, a 17-foot-long block of granite sat in a junkyard where it had been abandoned for several decades. Other artists had examined the rock and all determined that it was unfit for use. It was cracked, it was damaged, it was broken, and no one ever thought that anything beautiful could be made from this rejected rock. And then one day, along came a 25-year-old artist and sculptor, and when he saw that rock, he didn't see blemishes and imperfections. He said he could see an angel in the rock, and he wanted to set it free. To him, even the broken places and the cracked places fit in perfectly with the vision that he had for that stone. He took that colossal piece of cold granite back to his workshop, and he began to labor over it tirelessly with hammer and chisel. He worked night and day with obsessive dedication. The people in the village where he lived thought that he had lost his mind because from time to time he would scream at the rock saying, come out, come out. After nearly three years, that young artist by the name of Michelangelo finally revealed his enduring masterpiece, a sculpture that is so iconic, it is probably the best known sculpture in existence, known the world over as the statue of David. Michelangelo saw something in that block of granite long before anyone else did. Where they saw imperfections and blemishes, he saw a masterpiece, and he worked diligently to set it free. 
So what does God see when he looks at you? You know what I think? I'm convinced that no matter where you go or what you do, no matter how many faults or failures have blemished your life, whenever God looks at you, he still sees inside of you the potential that he created in you when he was fashioning you and forming you in your mother's womb. My friend, God also has a dream for your life and he's calling to that potential inside of you. Like Michelangelo called a masterpiece out of an ordinary looking stone. My friend, God is calling to you today. Come out in Jesus' name.